Cody right here. Uh, obviously, a massive fight week for UFC 300, big milestone. You're accustomed to big cards, so I guess, uh, but like, what are the emotions now? Like, you know, fight week's done, fight camp's done, just got to cut weight and get in there and fight. Excited. I think that sums it up. The excitement, you know, all the hard work's been put in. We're here healthy, hungry, and, and motivated to go and perform, open up an amazing car in UFC 300, uh, and just grateful. Well, I was gonna bring that up. Like, you know, Dana announced that you guys were kicking off the card like a while ago. Did you, were you aware of that before he even, you know, he said it on ESPN or whatever? And do you like kicking off this card? You know, this is a first for me, fighting the first on the card. Um, but you know, we're making history. There's never been a matchup in the UFC that's two former world champions kicking off of a card. So grateful for the spotlight. Grateful for the opener of the amazing card. Like I said, with such amazing athletes, and also to draw people in early, you know, they don't want to miss this fight. And you both called for this fight, and it's not always the, the UFC will book a fight that, you know, both guys want that far out. So when you called out Davidson and he called out you, were, was it just a matter of time before this was, you know, rebooked at Bantamweight? You know, I called him out. He doesn't want this fight. Um, so let's get that clear. It's a, it's a fight that's been in my mind for a while. You know, I was supposed to fight him nearly four years ago. Obviously, I got COVID really bad. I had to pull out of the fight and, and focus on getting healthy. And it's been, you know, an uphill grind to get back to this point. You know, but I stuck true to myself, believed in myself through the ups and the downs, the adversity, what life throws at you. And everything comes full circle. And uh, we're here, fight week. And uh, I'm more excited for this fight now than it was scheduled in the past. Is that just because of what he's been saying or where you are in your career or like what makes this more important? Because that original booking was supposed to be a title fight and now it's, you know, you're kicking off this card. You know, for me, it's, uh, it's a fight that I've, I've wanted for so long, you know, and to have those feelings that taken away from you from COVID, um, to be back to fighting for a world championship, um, you know, so, so those feelings still have motivated me and, and give me, you know, such drive to this camp and this call out and this visualization of my last fight to call him out. You know, he came up and had a successful debut win at Bantamweight. And uh, I feel good here, this is my weight. And I'm here to remind everybody that I'm the best in the world. And I'm sure people have asked you that, but you know, he's, you know, he's called you mentally fragile. He's called you this and that. Do you think he truly believes that or is he just trying to sell the fight? Yeah, I, truly, he's trying to sell the fight. And also I've been there. I've been there where I had to talk, where I wasn't mentally uh, prepared to go on there. I'm always ready to fight, you know, physically. Mentally, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing, you know, that I feel like I've really honed my skills. I work with the UFC uh, sports therapist, Micah, and we've just been consistent since moving out here. You know, it's something that I never thought I needed to do. And some of, the, some of my hardest sessions were going there with him, you know, over training, over sparring, over the grind, constant grind. Um, it was always driving to those sessions, knowing that I had to you know, open up about my thoughts, my feelings, and I've never been one to express those, but, you know, he's helped out a lot tremendously, um, you know, not in just my athletic career performance-wise, but life as well. So be able to balance all that together and, and stay, you know, engaged in the moments and the times. And so I feel like that is a huge uh, thing that I've worked that's different. You know, nothing's different in my speed, my power, my vision, you know, um, it's my mental fortitude that's been what's keeping me here and keep me motivated and understanding this is what I w love to do. And I think that's what's really relit the passion and the, and the, and the love for the sport. So there was a time in my life when I was in my career that I was just kind of going through the motions, you know, fighting the fight, you know, I'm fighting because I want to fight. And that's, that's me being real and honest with myself, with everybody. Like, I'm so excited for this fight. This is a fight that I've called and wanted. Um, you know, going back to your question about Davison, I've been there where maybe he lacks a lot of confidence. Maybe he didn't prepare ready uh, like he needed to. So he's trying to get into the head game. And that's maybe his out, hey, get in Cody's head, I'm gonna win this fight. And that, that's just, if that's what he is going off of to be victorious on Saturday, he's gonna have a long night ahead of him. Uh, and just last one for me, uh, two quick ones that unrelated to your fight. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and the BMF fight between Max and Justin? Main event, um, super excited for that. Jamal, you know, what a, a journey he's had to come back, you know, from being a world champion, finally being a world champion, to the injury, to, you know, I've seen him at the PI, you know, with his rehab, you know, 
the way that he's been just, you know, diving at it, making one to come back, and then they, you know, they call him for the Alex fight. And look at his career. I mean, he's, he's fought the who's who. He's a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal fighter. Uh, just that's going to be an awesome main event. Um, you know, and then the BMF. I mean, you got Max Holloway, who's a fan favorite. I'm a huge fan of Max. And Justin Gaethje is just, I think he's really hitting his peak in his career over his last few fights. You know, we spoke briefly on the things that he's done um, to help get him catapulted to where he's at now. And he's looked amazing in his last few outings. So that's going to be an amazing fight and very well deserved for the BMF title. Cody over here. Given that this fight was going to take place during the COVID time and now we're here four years later, what are some ways your approach towards Davison changed since then to now, if it did change at all? You know, I was so early on in the camp when I had to pull, pull out from the fight. So we were just starting to study Davison. You know, he was doing his thing at 25. You know, he was, you know, a very good champion, was having good performances um, there. So we were, we were prepared for, you know, the best, best Davison to date, you know. Um, it was good to see him fight at Bantamweight, you know, to get that read. We, we watched a lot of that fight, you know, and got a lot of information and data that we have used all camp and going to use that in our favor, you know, come Saturday night. And your last six fights in the UFC have all been in Vegas between the T-Mobile and here at the Apex. Now that the seventh is going to be here for 300, such a historic card, how has it been fighting here in the fight capital of the world and even putting in work here like you have been at the PI and everything? You know, Las Vegas is an amazing place. Um, it's, it's growing so much, and to be able to fight here in the fight capital of the world is always great. You know, now I call this place home. I'm raising my son here, so it's great to fight in my backyard. You know, they pick me up from my house. You know, I see my son, I see my dogs before I go to battle, go into the battle, you know, come home, and it, it's great to sleep in my own bed. So it's nice to always fight in Las Vegas and to live here as well. Cody, over here. Um, obviously, Davison, a former champion at flyweight, fighting him at bantamweight. Um, you know, what are sort of the implications of a victory here? Because uh, with you being a former champion, that's got to count for something, taking out someone like Davison. Yeah, Davison's a former world champion at flyweight. He's came up, he's, what, ranked eighth in the division? I think rankings are a bunch of bullshit anyways, but he's eighth, so he's, he's, in, the, he's in the rankings. You know, that'd be three fights in a row for me. I'm going to knock him out on Saturday. It puts me right back to title contention where I belong. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know Uriah Faber, your good friend, is part of, I think, Davison's management at all. Have you spoken to him at all uh, just when this fight was announced at all? Because obviously you guys have a long uh, history. Yeah, you know, Davison's been out the Team Alpha Male and trained. Uh, we have a lot of Brazilians that's trained with him and, and coached him, actually, um, from Team Alpha Male. Actually, my training partner that I brought all camp, Alan Blasio, phenomenal. You guys keep hearing this name. He'll be in the UFC real soon. Um, trained with him. He's Brazilian as well. Gave me a good look uh, for Figueiredo. And um, yeah, so I mean, with, with Uriah, it's, I'm not too sure with what he's doing with the management you know, company, but Uriah's my boy. And uh, you know, we've talked and we, we train when he comes out. And we always you know, touch, uh, touch base uh, you know, throughout you know, parts of our lives. You know. Moving away from Sacramento was really tough, you know, but I couldn't be far from my son. I miss my team, I miss my, my coaches. And, and, and Sacramento was a, a place that I went out there at 22 years old, 1-0 as a pro. And, I had a dream, and, and Uriah opened his doors for me and helped me out a lot. So I'm very forever grateful for him and Team Alpha Male. I mean, I spent a decade of my life. I went from 1-0 to world champion in you know, less than two years with those guys. And, uh, you know, so I'll, Sacramento will forever be uh, a huge part of my life. But, you know, he's always going to be my friend. And, yeah, you know, he's, he's rooting for me and, you know, giving me tips and, you know, just excited for, the, excited for this opportunity. And just last one for me, uh, I'm sure you're excited to see Jose Aldo back in the division. That's a fight you've never had in your career. Is that kind of, you know, hitting your, hitting your radar when you heard that he was coming back of a potential matchup? Because we never got to see you two fight. Exactly. You know, Jose Aldo is one of the greatest, you know, fighters that ever graced the Octagon, WC, UFC. Um, it's funny because now I train with his good friend and longtime coach, Mateus Nakao, is my striking coach. So... Um, you know, I think that he would be a little, you know, unwavering of one has to fight. And, you know, I have so much respect for Jose Aldo and, and uh, you know, Novi and Al team that uh, I'm just excited for him to be back. You know, it's an ex exciting fight for him to come back and uh, fight Jonathan Martinez in uh, his home country in Brazil. So I'm happy that Jose Aldo is back. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to my fight against Davis and Figueiredo on Saturday, and that's what I'm focused on. Cody over here. Cody. Getting, becoming a champion is hard enough. 
trying to become a champion after doing a major reset is even harder. Look at Connor, Max, Charles Oliveira. Getting to that championship is tough. Do you believe that we're in the midst of a winning streak that gets you to a title shot? You trying to say this is a comeback? Yes, sir. <laughs> I think I've been here. You know, I just kind of been, you know, stuck in my ways. Had to learn, had to grow a lot. You know, you guys saw me at 23 years old, 25 year old world champion. This is my 20th professional fight, 15th professional, 15th UFC fight. So you guys watched me grow in this octagon, you know. And honestly, it was easy to become a world champion. That was easy. That was fast tracked, you know. You know, now climbing up this mountain again, it's been a little bit rougher. I found, you know, obstacles and adversity and, and setbacks, but I'm, I'm blazing this trail, which is a different trail along this mountain, you know. Um, so I'm excited. You know, like I said, I, I called for these, these fights. These are the fights that I want. This is the fight that's putting me back in title contention. This fight right here, you know, motivated me and has me driven to go out there and, and perform, you know. I definitely put the work in. And I'm just excited that it's fight week. I'm healthy. You know, I, I, I pray to God that Davison has, you know, prepared well and he's ready for an action-packed fight on Saturday. There was, there was a lot of hostility between you and the current Bantamweight champion over the years. Is that like a gigantic carrot at the end of the... Oh, that's, that's definitely. He's still the champion. When it's my time to, to fight for the title again and regain the title, I should say, then I'm, I'm happy with that fight because... That's going to be a huge pay-per-view draw. No other bantamweight in the division moves the needle like I do. You know, I just got to focus on winning, and uh, everything else will fall into place. Thank you, guys.